What do YouTube? B Kelly back again with another banger video. In today's video, y'all, I'm gonna be talking about what happened to the past 10 number one ranked cornerbacks from 2011 to 2020. And for this video, I will be using the 24 7 Sports composite rankings. In the 2011 recruiting class, the number one cornerback in the nation was Demetrius Nicholson who would end up going to Virginia. In this class, he was a four-star recruit and ranked as the 50th best player in the nation. Demetrius Nicholson would get off to a very hot start in his career at Virginia. In his first two years as a member of the Cavaliers football team, he would only miss one game, but besides that, he started in every game his freshman year and sophomore year, except the game he missed in 2012. But once he got to his junior season, he would only play in five games, then get injured with a lower extremity injury. And then 2014, as a senior, he would take a medical redshirt due to a toe injury, but he would play in one game that season, where he did have a pretty good game. But in 2015, as a redshirt senior, he would primarily be a backup defensive back that rotated in, as he only started in four of the games that he played in. In his five seasons at Virginia, he would record 174 total tackles, six tackles for loss, four interceptions, and two forced fumbles. In the 2012 recruiting class, the number one cornerback in the nation was Tracy Howard, who would end up going to Miami. He ranked as a five-star recruit and the 23rd best player in the nation. Tracy Howard would spend four years at Miami, where he recorded 104 total tackles, one tackle for loss, five interceptions, and two forced fumbles. His best season and his biggest season was in his true sophomore year, where he played in 12 games, recorded 38 total tackles, one tackle for loss, and four total interceptions. He would go undrafted in the 2016 NFL Draft, and shortly thereafter, he was picked up by the Cleveland Browns. Tracy Howard would play one season with the Cleveland Browns in 2016, where he played in 15 games and recorded 20 tackles. He was released going into the 2017 season. For the 2017 season, he was on Jacksonville's and Miami's practice squad. He has not been in the NFL since 2018, since he failed a physical. Coming out of the 2013 recruiting class, the number one cornerback in the nation was Vernon Hargreaves III, and he was the number three player in the nation and a five-star recruit, and he would end up going to Florida. He would end up spending three seasons as a member of the Florida Gators football team where he was a starter in every season and a big impact player for their defense. Now, in his three-year career there, he would rack up 121 total tackles, three tackles for loss, 10 interceptions, two fumble recoveries, and one forced fumble. After his junior season, he would forgo his final year of eligibility and declare his name for the 2016 NFL Draft, where he was taken in the first round, 11th overall pick by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Vernon Hargraves III spent three and a half seasons roughly in Tampa Bay. Now, he had a really big rookie season where he had 76 total tackles, one forced fumble, and one interception. But in 2017, he would face some injury problems in his second year where he only played in nine games. And 2018 was no different as he would only play in one game for the Buccaneers. And in 2019, he would only play in nine games total for the Buccaneers before he was traded off to Houston. Now, he has been with Houston since 2019, and he's still a member of their football team to today. And so far in his six-year NFL career, he has a total of 258 total tackles, six tackles for loss, three interceptions, one fumble recovery, and two forced fumbles. In the 2014 recruiting class, the number one cornerback in the nation was Adoree Jackson, who ranked as a five-star recruit and the number seven player in the nation, and he would end up going to USC. Adoree Jackson would spend three seasons at USC, where he was a key player for their defense all three seasons. In his three-year career, he would have 139 total tackles, six tackles for loss, six interceptions, two fumble recoveries, and three forced fumbles. He would forgo his final year of eligibility and declare his name for the 2017 NFL Draft, where he was taken in the first round, 18th overall pick by the Tennessee Titans. In his college football career, he was a consensus All-American in 2016, the 2016 Jim Thorpe Award winner, 2016 Johnny Rogers Award winner, and 2016 Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. Jackson has spent a total of four seasons in the NFL so far, all with the Tennessee Titans, 
even though he did recently sign with the New York Giants in this previous NFL offseason. But his career with the Titans he had in his first couple seasons as a rookie and second year player, he had a pretty good couple seasons as he was a big contributor to the, towards that defense. And he was a key piece of that defense all four years of his career, even though he did face some injury issues in the couple final years. In 2019, he would only play in 11 games. In 2020, when he played, he was key, but he was also injured a lot and only played in three games that season. So far in his four-year NFL career, he has racked up a total of 200 tackles, six tackles for loss, two interceptions, two fumble recoveries, and three forced fumbles. In the 2015 recruiting class, the number one quarterback in the nation was Iman Marshall, who ranked as the number four player in the nation and a five-star recruit, according to the 24-7 Sports Composite rankings, and he would end up going to USC. Marshall would play for USC for four seasons, and for those four seasons, he was a four-year starter. In those four years, he racked up a total of 218 tackles, nine and a half tackles for loss, six interceptions, and one forced fumble. In the 2019 NFL Draft, he was taken in the fourth round by the Baltimore Ravens. So far in Marshall's NFL career, he has been injured most of it. In his rookie season in 2019, he only played in three games, recording one tackle, and in 2020, he would be out the entire season with a torn ACL. Coming out of the 2016 recruiting class, the number one quarterback in the nation was Levante Taylor, who ranked as a five-star recruit and the number seven player nationally, and he would end up going to Florida State. In Levante Taylor's first few seasons at Florida State, he was not a starting defensive back, and he even faced some injury problems as well. And he really wasn't a true impact player, like on big time standards for Florida State in their defensive side of the ball, until he was a senior in 2019 where he recorded 37 tackles, 2.5 tackles for loss, 1 sack, and 1 interception. For his 4 year career there, he would end up racking up a total of 90 tackles, 5.5 for loss, 1 sack, 4 interceptions, and 1 forced fumble. Taylor would end up going undrafted in the 2020 NFL Draft. Taylor would sign as an undrafted free agent with the LA Rams, but he would not make the final roster or the practice squad. In the 2017 class, the number one quarterback in the nation was Jeff Akuda, who would ranked as the 8th best player in a 5-star recruit who would end up going to Ohio State. Jeff Okuda would play 3 years at Ohio State where he was a starter for his last 2 seasons. As a true freshman in the 2017 season, he recorded 17 tackles and 1 fumble recovery. In 2018, Jeff Okuda had 32 total tackles and 1 fumble recovery. And in 2019, he had his best season yet, where he had 34 total tackles, 1 tackle for loss, 3 interceptions, and 1 forced fumble. After this big season, he would declare his name for the 2020 NFL Draft for going his final year of eligibility, and in that draft, he would be taken with the third overall pick in the first round by the Detroit Lions. In Jeff Akuda's rookie season in Detroit, he would only play in 9 games starting in 6 of them, where he had 1 interception, 47 total tackles, and 4 tackles for loss, and 2 pass deflections as well. In the 2018 recruiting class, the number 1 cornerback in the nation was Patrick Sertan II, who was a 5-star recruit and the number 6 player in the nation, and he would end up going to Alabama. When Patrick Sertan got to Alabama, he would see immediate impactful playing time with the Crimson Tide, and it stayed that way for his 3-year career there, where he won a national championship as a junior. Now, in his three-year career, he would rack up 116 total tackles, six tackles for loss, four interceptions, one touchdown, one fumble recovery, and four forced fumbles, and he would forgo his final year of eligibility and declare his name for the 2021 NFL Draft, where he was taken with the ninth overall pick in that draft by the Denver Broncos. In the 2019 recruiting class, the number one cornerback in the nation was Derek Stingley Jr., who ranked as the number three player overall, and he would end up going to LSU. Derek Stingley, as a true freshman at LSU, where he even won a national championship, had a monster season. He was a consensus All-American as a true freshman in 15 games played. He had 38 total tackles, one tackle for loss, six interceptions, one fumble recovery, and 15 pass deflections. In 2020, he would not play in every game as he only played in seven, where he had 27 total tackles, two and a half tackles for loss, 
one fumble recovery and one forced fumble. But right now, it's projected to be a top 10 pick in the 2022 NFL Draft. In the 2020 recruiting class, the number one cornerback in the nation was also the number four player as well in the nation. That was five-star recruit Healy Ringo, who would end up going to Georgia. In his true freshman campaign for the 2020 college football season, he would not play in a single game due to injury. Well, guys, if you guys have made it this far in the video, remember to smash that like button, turn on them post notifications, and subscribe for more videos. B. Kelly, out.